Hockey Action News live at 11. Check this out, a 30 second sprint that seemed like hours caught on video. A deputy rushes to save a man drowning in his backyard. Plus, another deadly crash on local roads. The message from law enforcement tonight. And I was, I was like a legit a bum. And I had a pillow. I had a pillow, I had a blanket. An inspirational story of a UNLV rebel who went from homeless to getting a full scholarship. And does what you post online impact your job chances? Contact 13 has the answer. But first, developing now a motorcyclist has died after a crash in the northwest part of the valley. His death, the 96th so far for Metro this year. 13 Action News reporter Austin Carter tells us how law enforcement is taking this issue seriously. Another day, another fatality on the roads here in our valley. The latest crash happening around 1230 this afternoon. We were there as crews cleaned up the scene near Alexander and Buffalo, where we know a motorcycle hit a car and that rider, he didn't make it. His death marks the 96th traffic related fatality for Metro so far this year. And the frustration is building. These are someone's loved one, their brother, sister, husband, wife. Just two days ago, two people were killed by a suspected drunk driver causing the street near the South Point, a crash that police say was avoidable. Three lives were destroyed in a matter of minutes with some bad decision. And last week, Levi, just eight years old, was killed after a woman going 103 miles per hour slammed right into the car he was in. And the numbers are alarming. NHP Metro and the Nevada Office of Traffic Safety met recently to tackle these issues. NHP says they're adding an additional DUI task force and starting October 1st, interlock devices will be required if convicted of drunk driving. And Metro is working to impact the community through social media videos just like this one. The community has almost become numb to this or just ignorant for lack of a better term. and accepted this and that's the part that I say I'm embarrassed. Austin Carter. We're better than this Las Vegas. 13 Action News. Well new tonight our streets are safer right now. Take a look Metro seizing three firearms today including a really big one that looks like a modified handgun. Police say they made a traffic stop in the downtown area when they found the drugs and the firearms. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm 13 First Alert Meteorologist Dan Bronis. A uh, pretty decent night out there, just a little warm. 93 degrees current temperature right now uh, here in Las Vegas. That's at the airport. Humidity very low, very dry air moved in over the last couple of days. Winds uh, a little breezy here and there, but really not too bad. Southwest wind, nine miles an hour right now. We're going to see winds stay calm overnight tonight. Clear skies out there, no rain. Monsoon's done with it, looks like, for the uh, year. Have to wait till next year to get that monsoon going again. Temperatures tomorrow warming up. High temperature right around 105 degrees here in Las Vegas. Pretty good day to walk the dog early or later. Don't go in the afternoon with that hot asphalt on the ground. I'm going to let you know when temperatures finally drop off a little bit because they are expected to this upcoming work week. Tom. All right, well, something Dan didn't just mention. While the rest of the valley saw some clear skies, it did rain at Cashman Field. The uh, Vegas Lights dropping $5,000 in cash from a chopper during tonight's game. Dollar bills raining down here in Sin City. And the Lights fans, it's a mad dash to get the cash. Yeah, and you see them running there. 200 people got a chance to get their hands on that money. Season ticket members were randomly selected for it. The team told 13 Action News 8,017 fans were in attendance tonight. The lights were taking on the LA Galaxy, and unfortunately the lights lost, but looks like some lucky fans got their hands on some money for sure. And football season is underway. The UNLV Rebels drawing big crowds for their home opener at Sam Boyd. But today's game also special for a one-time walk-on for the Rebels, completing a long journey from homelessness to a defensive lineman with a full ride. For defensive lineman Amir Aziz, the journey for number 66 to the field at Sam Boyd started on another field at Durango High School. Not just where he practiced, but sometimes where he slept, at one point homeless at just 15. I was, I was like a legit bum. I, mean, I had a pillow, I had a pillow, I had a blanket. But he also had a goal, eventually walking on as a rebel, working 13 hour shifts in security on the strip to pay his way through UNLV and still showing up to practice. That hard work all paying off with the help of an illusionist, making his tuition disappear. Oh, no, no. <laughs> the walk on now has a full ride. After that moment, like everything, everything changed. It's like I'm 345, you know, it's like 100 pounds got lifted off of me, you know. His next goal off the field, getting his degree in sociology. After all, ask him if he's ever giving up. I mean, I don't know how to. 
Never give up. Good advice there. And Aziz suited up, but he didn't take the field today. Still, though, the Rebels dominated UTEP, winning in a 52 to 24 blowout. Well, right now, with the midterm election now less than two months away, Nevada getting a lot of national attention with some of the most important races in the country happening right here. And now black community leaders are working to increase voter engagement. The Color of Change Political Action Committee is holding a weekend long event to think of ways on how to get more people to the polls. 13 Action News reporter Nina Porshunkula tells us how. In this room full of cheers and chants, a grassroots effort to increase voter engagement in the black community is starting. Some of the issues they want voters to consider in making their pick better education and community policing. We know how to talk to black voters better than anyone else, so we're taking the lead and the charge. The event was hosted by national organization Color of Change Political Action Committee of the Orleans Casino. The group is new to Nevada. Over 100 people from Las Vegas and California wanted to mobilize black voters for the upcoming midterm elections. And we want to be having conversations with them about why the governor's race is important, why the attorney general's race is important, um, and why they need to get involved. Black voter turnout declined 4.7 percent between 2012 and 2016. And these local leaders want to change that this fall by going door to door, making phone calls, and creating a text brigade. Don't think that your vote doesn't count. It counts, but if you discount yourself, you're discounting the rest of us. Nina Pershunkla, 13, Action News. Now to some new information about a weeks-long statewide operation targeting everything from fugitives to gangs and sex offenders. Federal authorities say they arrested 135 people who were wanted on felony charges. They also seized 14 firearms and over four pounds of various drugs. That effort involved 21 local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. It ended yesterday after starting on August 20th. Well, now to a story you asked us to investigate. Mysterious notices promising big savings on NV Energy bills are being put up on people's doors. These yellow notices popped up on Valley Homes near Spring Mountain and Jones. They offer no upfront cost solar panels for homes. Alan Eden, though, says he was suspicious and he reached out to Contact 13. Well, it turns out his gut was right. Those notices are not from NV Energy. This didn't seem like something that NV Energy would uh, just be taping to my gate. Yeah, and NV Energy says they do not go door to door soliciting solar or any other products. Contact 13 called the number on that card. A man named Joseph said he worked for Vivint Solar. A spokesperson for the company said they aren't sure who made those cars and cards and say the cards are against policy and shouldn't be used at all. Now we were made aware of this story after a viewer reached out to us. If you have a story you'd like us to look into, just send us an email to 13investigates at ktnv.com and be sure to include your phone number. Well, starting today is the 2018 Vegas Rookie Faceoff. It all takes place at City National Arena in Summerlin. Six teams, including the Vegas Golden Knights, will take part in the inaugural event. The team shared some video on Twitter there of the rookies practicing. Players from California, Arizona, and Colorado are in the event. The four-day event runs through Tuesday with three games happening each day. All three Vegas Golden Knights games will be streamed online. We have the link posted to our website. Well, a change is coming to the T-Mobile Arena. The arena announced its multi-year partnership with Las Vegas' own Allegiant Airlines. The hometown airline, now the official domestic airline of T-Mobile Arena. So you can expect to see more Allegiant signage and promotions around the arena and Toshiba Plaza. Well, although marijuana is legal here in Nevada, allowing pot lounges are still up for debate in Las Vegas. In the meantime, one local art studio says they have the next best thing. Paint and Puff near Western and Sahara has a special permit allowing vaping with CBD, the version of cannabis that doesn't have THC in it. For 40 bucks, you can vape CBD and learn how to paint. The owner says in addition to tourists, they've also been getting a lot of people who suffer from chronic pain. Within 20 minutes of smoking in class and their CBD, you see them start seeing like, oh, they're so free handed, they're ready to go. They don't feel any of that pain anymore. And Pain and Puff says if the city does allow pot lounges, they'll allow smoking pot in addition to just vaping. Well, a race against time, the amazing actions by one deputy to save a drowning man, and it's all caught on video. And an evening at home turned deadly for a man shot and killed by a police officer. That officer now facing new questions as we hear from the victim's mother about why she thinks it happened. 
Plus, is your social media hireable? We're not talking professional pages. Contact 13 is looking at social media incrimination and what you might be doing wrong. All right, we'll take a look at this. A Florida deputy running not for his life, but to save someone else's. Now he's being called a hero after jumping the wall of a multi-million dollar home to help a man drowning in the backyard. And I wanted to get him back onto dry land. Uh, I could see he was struggling. He was still some semi-conscious, but he was obviously not to a point where he could pull himself up. The man's wife says he was trapped in the water for about 30 minutes until the deputy was able to rescue him. Well, now to that fatal shooting in Dallas involving a police officer who shot and killed her neighbor. The officer has been identified as Officer Amber Geiger, who has been with the department for four years. Police say Geiger told them she entered the man's apartment, which is next to her own, mistaking the victim for an intruder. ABC's Zachary Keish reports the victim's mother now suggesting that her son might still be alive if he were white. An off-duty Dallas police officer who shot and killed her neighbor in his apartment says she believes she was in her own home. Very early on, I found inconsistencies, discrepancies in accounting uh, and evidence. Officials are not saying whether the door to the neighbor's apartment was unlocked when the officer entered or if this officer and the victim knew each other. The Texas Rangers are now handling the investigation. We have turned this investigation over to ensure total transparency 26-year-old Botham John was a beloved youth pastor, and neighbors are in disbelief at the way he died. He was just like a ray of sunshine. You couldn't see Botham and not like, have the biggest smile on your face. Botham J John was exactly the sort of citizen we want to have in the city of Dallas. The victim's mother is demanding answers from the officer. I want her to come clean speak the truth and forgive her, but she could never give me my son back. Family, friends, and neighbors held a vigil Saturday afternoon at the church where John led worship songs every other Sunday. The police chief says blood of the officer was drawn to test for drugs and alcohol, and the Texas Rangers have interviewed her. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. We want to turn now to some breaking news just coming in. At least one person is dead after a motorcycle crash in North Las Vegas. Police say it just happened moments ago. This is near Pecos and Craig right off the 15. Once we get more details, we'll pass it along to you both on air and online. Well, Michael Cohen says he's willing to let Stormy Daniels out of their agreement to keep silent about her alleged affair with the president, but he wants the $130,000 in hush money paid back. A source close to Trump's former attorney says Cohen no longer benefits from the agreement because Daniels has already broken her silence. The payout was among the eight charges he pleaded guilty to last month. Well, right now, gamblers are taking their bets about who wrote that op-ed about the Trump administration in the New York Times before that secret comes out. We took a look uh, at the odds on the site MyBookie. The favorite is The Field, or somebody not actually individually listed. That's at one to three odds. Vice President Mike Pence is in second. He's listed at two to three odds. People are also speculating on Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Chief of Staff John Kelly, and Attorney General Jeff Sessions. You can place a bet on that until tomorrow morning. From Contact 13 now, a portable date rape test is now for sale. It's disposable and uses just a few drops to determine if date rape drugs have been put into a drink. It tests for Xanax and Valium, but it doesn't test for GHB or ketamine, which are also other common date rape drugs. Now that test sells for $35. Will new tonight ever think about how your social media posts might impact your job chances? More than half of employers say they'll probably refuse to hire someone based on something they saw online. Now that's according to a survey from hiring company Paychex. It found hiring managers may look at how often you post. The more you post, the less you might be working. Hiring managers also don't like to see negative posts about your coworkers or any inappropriate comments or debates. And some employers actually keep on checking your social media pages. 10% look up their employees on a daily basis, and nearly one third actually fired an employee because of something that they saw. And if you're looking for a job, we're here to help. We're working with Nevada Job Connect to make sure you know about job openings right here in the Valley. There's an opening for a food service supervisor. Pay for that is $9.50 an hour. Also an opening in a warehouse. Pay for that will depend on your experience. And an opening for a retail supervisor. Pay for that job will also depend on your experience. 
For more information on these jobs and other openings around the valley, just go to ktnv.com jobs. Well, the San Gennaro Festival is a go this year. That's according to the event's promoter. It'll be held at Boulder Station September 12th through the 16th. The festival says it now has a multi-year contract with the hotel, which will serve as its new home. Last year, the event ran into some issues after their license was suspended after undercover police cited bartenders at the festival for serving alcohol to minors. Well, happening right now, the Delta Fire in Northern California continues to be a tough job for firefighters. A 45-mile stretch of interstate is closed through the weekend. Walls of flames jump the roadway and threaten drivers. ABC's Linda Lopez has more. California gripped in its worst years of wildfires ever. More than 1.2 million acres destroyed so far. Walls of flames roaring through forests up and down hillsides. As it goes up the hill, it is getting quite heavy fuels. Thousands of trees destroyed, some 70 feet tall. Exhausted firefighters battling three major fires in Northern California and attacking the infernos from the air. The Delta Fire jumping over Interstate 5 near the Oregon-California state line forcing over 45 miles of highway to be closed. It's not just the danger of a fire front trapping people in cars and trucks. Look at that side just caught on fire. We cannot stay right here. We gotta walk. Burnt out trees falling onto the road also threaten motorists. The interstate, a major north-south thoroughfare, not expected to be reopened before Sunday morning at the earliest. Drivers now forced to take longer detours to get through. One hopeful sign, winds are dying down and the temperatures are getting lower, giving firefighters the opportunity to try and gain the upper hand on the fires this weekend. Linda Lopez, ABC News, New York. Now, 13 first alert weather. Yeah, the weather out west definitely not helping those fires. Uh, looks like winds are going to pick up though next week, so hopefully they get some ground on it this weekend before things get a little worse. Here locally, hot day, dry day as well. 107 degrees for Las Vegas this afternoon. The heat was on in Death Valley, 118 degrees. Temperatures 10 degrees above where they should be. Right now, still mild, 93 degrees. Walking outside, 11 o'clock, 102 Death Valley, sitting at 95 in Laughlin. Into the 70s up to our north. Sounds much nicer up there, but temperatures going to stay mild overnight tonight here in Las Vegas. Winds are not as strong as they were earlier today. Winds are going to pick back up a little bit tomorrow like today. Nothing too bad. Uh, we did add another day to the 100 degree mark for the year. 87 days so far this year. We're approaching that record of 100 days at 100. That's the most ever. Uh, coincidence, yes. 100 days at 100 degrees for Las Vegas. We're going to get close to that. I don't know if we're going to break that, but close enough. That's for sure. Temperatures above average so far this year outpacing below average. That is for sure 66% of the year. So two out of three days we have seen a temperature above the average high. August, no exception. That was an extremely hot month. That's the most in the column. 27 days during the month of August above the normal. Tonight, temperatures staying above the average. Go figure with the extreme heat during the day. 76 in Summerlin, 77 tonight. Anthem winds will be lighter in all areas. Picking up again tomorrow afternoon anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Clear skies, 102 for Centennial Hills, sitting at 104 in Anthem. Up in the 80s, up in the mountain. We're watching Olivia that could impact uh, Hawaii by this time uh, on Wednesday, actually. So Wednesday morning that could impact Hawaii. Then we're watching Florence, which is going to be a major hurricane. And look at the track right on into North Carolina. As of now, that is likely to change a little bit, but still things are not looking good across the East Coast for that tropical storm right now, which will be a hurricane by tomorrow. Temperatures 104 on Monday, keeping it warm. Then we're down to 101 Tuesday 90s for the middle of the week. Yes, that sounds nice. 99, right? But that is still above average overnight lows back in the mid 70s. So not a bad week, but still warm for this time of year. Below 100, we'll take it. Thanks, Dan. Well, tonight, a powerful plea from a news anchor and mother. The message she shared live on television after losing a daughter to a drug overdose. And don't forget to download KTNV Mobile. It's in the App Store and Google Play. It's free and lets you watch 13 Action News video anywhere you have mobile service. We'll be right back. Now to a powerful moment on live TV in South Dakota, a news anchor reporting on the deadly overdose of her own daughter, making an emotional plea about America's opioid crisis. ABC's Lindsay Davis shares her story. It was the most difficult newscast Angela Kennecke would ever deliver. 
In recent years, we have brought you many news reports on the opioid crisis. But now, the opioid epidemic has hit home in a tragic and devastating way for me personally. On May 16th, my 21-year-old daughter, Emily, died of an overdose. Her official cause of death was fentanyl poisoning. Her anguish still raw. And there is no recovery for me or my family of the loss of my talented, smart, and beautiful daughter, Emily. The news anchor at South Dakota's Kello TV going public with her personal plea in the belief that her daughter's death might help abolish the stigma of opioid addiction. Emily. My only hope in the face of such devastating loss is that Emily's story, my family's personal tragedy, can be a catalyst for change. If 72,000 people were dying a year from any other cause, we would be uniting to end the suffering of so many families, so many mothers. Just hard to watch there. ABC's Lindsay Davis reporting. Angela has set up a, a fund uh, me page to help others in need of treatment. Emily died just three days before she was scheduled to be checked into a treatment center. Well, right now, a new product helping clean up our oceans. Why some say this aquatic garbage collector isn't solving the problem. Stay with us. Well, new tonight as more people learn about the trash collecting in the world's oceans, a Dutch entrepreneur claims that he's come up with a solution. The inventors of the ocean cleanup trash collector say their device can cut the Great Pacific garbage patch in half. Even so, critics say environmentalists should focus on stopping trash from ending up in the water in the first place. 80% of the trash and plastic that enters the world's oceans starts on land. And if we can prevent it, or, or better yet, reduce it first, we have a much better chance of reducing the harm that this stuff causes once it's out in the ocean. The system launched from San Francisco Bay today. It has a skirt that extends 10 feet underwater, rounding up plastic without impacting the underwater environment. Well, a potential solution to a big problem across the country. Volunteers in San Diego building small sleeping cabins like these to put a roof over the heads of the homeless. The structures are about the size of a kid's playhouse. They can sleep four people and cost about 2,500 bucks to make, but money isn't the problem. The city has decided not to um, give us any place to put them. And so we're left to scramble to decide how we get that to happen. Now, the volunteers say they have one location in mind, and they're just waiting on city leaders to approve it. Well, it's one of the most popular times of the year, football season, right? Well, catching a game wouldn't be the same without food, so wait until you hear about some fun eating habits from a new survey. We'll be right back. All right, well, contrary to what these 100-degree temps would have you think, football is here, and with millions of people watching college or NFL games, food is always at the games, right? That's a part of the game. And Groupon conducted a survey about football game watching habits. Of the 2,000 people they interviewed, 55%, that's a majority of people, by the way, admitted to double dipping a chip. Men and millennials, I feel called out there right now, are more, like, more than likely to, uh, to be double dippers. The survey also found people can eat an average of 18 chips in a single sitting. Also, the average person eats 12 dozen wings, seven pizzas, and 200 bucks worth of alcohol throughout the entire football season. Men and millennials, I feel like they're calling me out. You know what, I'll, I'll admit it, I've, I've double dipped chips too, but you know what, Every, everyone does it. So, you know, we all do it. That's 13 Extra News Live at 11. We're always on at KTMV.com, our mobile app, our Roku channel. Our next reports begin at 5 a.m. on Good Morning Las Vegas. Thanks for watching, and from all of us here at Channel 13, have a good night.